Hello and welcome to another video. So today we are playing a Bloodcraft in Unlimited. This is a Vengeance deck. This is a reasonable Vengeance deck. I think it does fairly well, at least for my playtesting so far. I didn't really find anything too difficult. The only real bad part about these kind of decks are that they are extremely aggressive and really lack any kind of end game outside of Emeralda. So once you get past turn 6, 7, it's kind of game over against basically anything other than maybe another aggro deck that's running out of resources as well, in which case your match will be pretty close. But in the early game, this deck absolutely dominates, and that's what we're going to be showing you today. So first off, I would just like to say, before we get right into this video, if you haven't, you can go check out all my unlimited videos for Dawnbreaker Night Edge. I have a new playlist created, it will be updated frequently with these decks, so be sure to check that out. There's also one for rotation, so whenever rotation videos go up, they'll also be added to that playlist, so you can check that out there. Newest videos will always go into those playlists for Dawnbreaker's Night Edge, and we'll have a new one every expansion, so I can keep all those playlists neat and tidy for you guys, or you can just go back and watch stuff from older expansions too. So hopefully you guys will enjoy that, and we'll get right into it. Game 1 is against Shadow. Shadow is pretty popular, especially things like Adamu Reanimate. Seems to be doing quite well, and that's actually what we'll be covering in next video, so be sort of stay tuned for that one. I'll give my thoughts on what kind of deck Adamu is at the moment. So we start off with a pretty solid hand, you know, a 1 drop, 3 drop, the Emerald is not here or there, but having that 1 drop against Shadow is extremely important. Being able to keep their followers at bay is extremely good in their early game. Of course, going against a turn 2 play is extremely difficult if they go straight into Staircase and then into uh, Skeleton Key because then you need a direct counter, but in this situation we're not too bad off, especially since we drew Razory, which is going to at least kill the spell in us immediately, even if we have to take 1 damage. Of course, they did have Skull Ring. I, said, I think I said Skeleton Key before, but Skull Ring is what I was talking about. This Skull Ring is absolutely crazy for Adamu builds, getting 3 followers on 3, well sorry, 2 followers and a amulet sets up really nicely. All you need is one card on the board on turn 2 and you're right. So if they had have played a staircase into the Skull Ring, would have been a different story. But they are going really hard now as well, which is going to be difficult, so setting up a belt is extremely good. Being able to make sure I have enough damage to deal with an Atomy play next turn if that's what they go for. The only real risk will be if they play something big, which is a little bit of a worry, but not something I can really concern myself with too much. And we also have the Scarlet as a pretty good counter, being an instant death bane. Of course, Bellinus coming into ruining all our parties today. So they are going to get two ghosts out of this, which is going to hurt a little bit. Although not too bad. We do end up going face with it though. Throwing them to my face, not really the play I would make. But then again, you can't remove this 4-3 anyway with what they had, so it was probably the best way to go about it. Since we're already in Vengeance, playing another Belf doesn't really hurt us. Getting it out, getting it straw power, making sure again to counter their Atomy turn, so if they do go into an Atomy, we have something to deal with it immediately. We haven't seen any kind of real threat come down, so we weren't too worried about them being able to reanimate anything that turn. Even an Atomy into reanimate wouldn't have been that bad. A 6 is going to hurt though, especially with that instant potion there giving them a pretty decent way to clear that. I'm coming for you. But our 2-3 does stick pretty well. So our only real concern now is this 6-3 and dealing with it. Luckily that Diablo Drain off the top of our deck, perfect way to deal with it while still staying in a perfect vengeance situation and able to set up a really nice board. So we are going to be able to go straight to the face for a nice little bit of 8 damage. And now I don't think there's really anything Shadow could do to us that would have been able to succeed. So next up, we've got Forest. This match, let's just say was interesting. When we get to the end, you'll see exactly what I mean by that. But we'll let it play out and see where it goes first. So we start off with a pretty decent hand. Yuria Savage with Pure Hearted Singer, all really good cards, especially in the Forest matchup, where you want to get something like Yuria on board that deals with both 1-1s and deals damage. 
especially when our opponent plays nothing on their turn one. That's always good. For now. Luckily, we also get the Belf, which is going to curve out nicely with this deck. Flowers of Flower of Fairies seems to be a popular card at the moment in Unlimited. Hopefully, I'll have a forest video for you guys relatively soon. I've got a couple of decks there I want to give a go and maybe make a video on, along with Haven. I'm also looking into doing a Seraph video, but I don't know whether that's going to come out now or a little bit later. Seraph is a little bit tricky to get to work in this current meta. Normally, you add it as an addition and not really build a deck around it currently, so hopefully I can get something for you guys there, though. So, doing pretty well. I can trade into this pretty okay and still get a nice board out of it. It's a pity I had to get rid of all of that extra damage I could have had, but dealing with that H and Elf was just too good. So, Flower of Fairies, giving them a card. Goblin Mage coming down, searching out probably Roach. I mean, that's 99% of the time what they're searching for. And now we're actually in a good spot. We can deal some good damage, we can set up this belt. I was really tempted to go for the Spiderweb Imp instead though. I thought that would have probably been the better play. Just because putting myself at 10 does put me at a massive risk going into the more mid to late game against Roaches. That was a risk I was willing to take. Knowing that I've got a decent heal and a Spiderweb Imp to set up a little bit of a defense line, I was at least going to take the chance. Chance of death being wasting their entire turn 5 also isn't too shabby. Now we get a chance to play this Dark General along with a probably a Urius or Spiderweb Imp just to really set up the board. Spiderweb being the better option to avoid being roached down. But we get a nice 8 damage, putting them right within lethal range next turn. I mean, if they don't clear this board, it's going to be disastrous. Cassiopeia though is a great way to do it. Pinging most of the board here. Get a nice spread though. Leaving up the majority of what I had. Now, if I had have thought about this turn slightly better, I might have tried to just go straight into Spiderweb Furious Urius because then they would die to anything that was played. Instead, I did just play a single Urius. Which was probably the wrong move, honestly. Because it's... I could have guaranteed a lethal, which would have been better, so... I'm sure you guys will flame me in the comments, as always, for making that play there. Because it definitely wasn't the better option. Furious would have been the best to do there. Unfortunately, we do take a couple of roaches. If they had have done this, this is where it is. They missed their evo. Beginning to evo their own roach, leave me at one health and letting themselves die. It was just absolutely tragic when this happened. They thought about that turn for so long and then didn't end up killing me. So the final game for this video is against Haven. Haven is another reasonable deck in Unlimited, at least from my testing. I personally prefer Elena because I actually love playing Elena Haven, and Tenko Shrine really helps that out just to make it a little more enjoyable. While not top tier, it's definitely a strong deck. But, depending on what haven you go for, there are so many different variations now in Unlimited that you can play, varying degrees of success with them, as you'll probably see in some of my future videos when I delve a bit more into haven and see where that takes us, but we get a reasonable start, getting the Urius out on one, not always the best thing against haven, but also not the worst. I mean, usually Urius is better follow up immediately to Beast Call, but in the situation of my hand, I really just wanted to get a two drop out over just playing a Goblin, so I think that was the better way to do it. Plus, we can now go for the Savage Wolf, and they did still go for the Beast Call, so all we gotta do is keep this Urius alive to gain its value. Of course, Jeweled Priestess is a little bit of a pain. It is going to give them some increased draw, or in this case, Black Diamond, dealing 2 damage to the enemy leader and restoring 2 to our opponent. Looking for those heals, so makes me think they're definitely aiming for an Elena deck, especially since the proc is going to be on the Beast Call at the same turn, so I can definitely see where they're taking it. Fortunately for me, I can go for some good damage, and if I clear out this 1-2, I don't have to worry about it really wrecking my board. And Birds, Bird Keeping Disciples, a weird choice there. Probably not what I would have went with. I mean, they were probably hoping to have a laner, I guess, but they really needed to deal with this board, so they were forced to make a decision. And that decision just happened to be to do this. Luckily, Diabolic Drain is going to both heal us and remove this, but 
really want to get some value out of this first, being able to just play a few things out, not have to worry about losing health before just dropping the Diablo I've drained. Since I'm not worried about spending 5 on our Diablo Drain next turn, I'm free to just keep that at at 12 happily and not worry even if they don't take me down. So 6 health left and a full board to deal with on turn 5, not the easiest thing for Haven to do. Really needing to have something strong on this turn, I mean, that's good but I just don't think it's going to be enough and it also means I can use my Diablo Drain again. I also could have just purely because of the fact that they left left up a really decent card honestly leaving that black diamond I actually completely forgot that it will deal damage to me so I wouldn't have had to worry about my Diablo anyway but this worked out nicely I can deal with it I can go for the Evo I've still got another pure hearted from a bit of draw power and really can just go face so even if they clear this entire board next turn wasting their turn and losing their amulet follower here not really of any concern because I'll instantly start restocking my hand with Pure Hearted Singer and looking for just that little bit of reach I need to close out the game. Luckily they don't have have their clear so that's always a good thing. Because from here I don't think there's many ways they could wipe this board clean. They would need to have at least a banishment to survive this. And that's not a banishment. So I hope you guys did enjoy this video. If you want to check this deck out, of course, the deck list will be in the description below where you can always find it. It's pretty fun. It does really well, at least in my testing so far. And it's really, really budget orientated. I mean, we literally have five legendaries, two of the Nuvania, three Belfs. A Belf can also be obtained in the um, beginner deck, uh, what are they called, sorry, the structure decks or whatever you want to call them. I've completely blanked on what they were called now, but the the pre-builds, that's what I was looking for. Pre-built decks, you can buy Belf, so if you guys don't have it or you're just starting out and you want to spend a bit of money, this isn't a bad option if you are looking to play Unlimited. Belf just has that decent value as a card, but of course, just for some fun, I mean, it's reasonable, it's pretty cheap and not too bad on the ladder right now. So if you want to check it out, again, deck in the description below. Be sure to hit the like button and subscribe, and I'll catch you guys next time. See ya.